Okay, as the Cobra Man would say, take three, which is, this is take three. I still haven't seen the items in the box, but everything is uh, packed very well in this box with uh, double boxes and then boxes inside of boxes and every box on it had my name and address. So uh, These are some items that I purchased from Georgia Copper. They have a lot of good quality copper items for ground systems. And I think copper is approaching the price of gold. It's just in, it's insane at this point. So we're all going to have a peek at the same time. All I did was go through and kind of edit here a little bit. So here's the first box on top. I'll try to pull this out if I need. I don't know what's in here. So we're all going to get a peek at the same time. Okay. These are, I believe, copper clamps. I mean, 48 foot of crank wrap off of it. Very well packed. Okay, now these right now have some kind of uh, plastic coating on them, I guess, for doing manufacturing, but they're pure copper clamps. Okay, and uh, they're pretty pricey, and I was debating on whether I was going to get them, and I decided to do this the right way. These are uh, made by Polyphaser. And uh, you see part of what you do. I'll explain what they're going to be used for. So I got there's five of those in here, and then there's a couple uh, brown rod clamps here, five eighths diameter for some wire. But if there's something I want to actually do to the endpoints, so that's some of the items. We got tin copper braid, which is good and what you really want to use for an ORF ground. These are this is going to be for uh, I bought 30 feet because I'm going to use some for my truck too for some ORF issues. But uh, one inch tin copper braid. Everything super passing job in here. So I guess everybody knows what pin strap is like for those that don't. So you can get a good shot of this. So it's actually a copper braided strap, really fine braid, and then they tin it. So that will be used from uh, equipment to my in-station uh, ground bar. And uh, it's going to be a smaller diameter than what I'm using outside, and there's a good reason for that. So that's the braid. I don't even know what's in this little box. Let's cut this puppy open. Knife action going on here. Come on, knife. Do your thing. Blade. You blade on the toy knife. More paper. Ah. Anytime you do copper to aluminum or, or copper to copper, you want to use good. Oh, the, this is uh, antiox joint compound. Okay, and you'll see this one says copper to copper. And then I have another bottle here. For aluminum to copper. Aluminum to aluminum or aluminum to copper. So they'll be used on all the connections. Outside, all the stuff that's going to be outside. So when I use one of these clamps here, 
that will be spread on the inside. So let's see, we still got another box. Some more paper. Anybody need some paper? I got some paper. Free paper. And this is the one that I think is worth gold nowadays. Pull this out of here. They're Packer kicks, but copper strap, inch and a half, point out twenty two hundred feet. Now I got a deal on this because wasn't much of a deal. But supposedly there's a little bit of staining on it. Which doesn't appear to be too bad on the outside. And you know what? I'm going to stick it in the ground. In, in a day it's going to be green. So I'm not really... I don't care if there's man... See the little bit of uh, tarnish there and there's some lines and stuff on it. I guess if you're really picky or you're doing something else with it, it would matter. But I got a, I was originally going to go with uh, a smaller amount. I'm thinking I'm going to need about uh, 50 or 60 feet outside. But uh, they had a deal on this. It was in their like little bargain area. There was only one or two of them in there, so I figured, I figured I'd grab it. Now, here's the deal. Get one of these you run this outside as your ground wire. Now, for RF, since it's an inch and a half wide, you're getting like three inches of, of uh, area instead of a wire where, you know, your surface, I'm talking surface area. So if you ran a wire, even if you ran a, a, a very large gauge wire, from ground rod to ground rod, you're only going to get so much surface area around the out, outside of the wire. When you use a strap like this, you've increased your surface area as an RF ground. So, uh, inch and a half, inch and a half, you know, that's like three inches of surface area going down the line. Now, this will go, this will run from uh, grounding rod to grounding rod, and then it'll be sandwiched to the copper coated, copper bonded. Uh, ground rod with these copper clamps so it's you can be just copper all the way so what you do is you have your clamp here and you feed the strap in between this and, and the ground rod and then when you clamp this down it's got a real nice tight fit to it to both this you know this whole plate area and you'll have the antioxidant on the inside of it and then uh, that's giving you a really nice, you're, so you're going to get that that good one and a half on the one side is going to be pressed like, I would say, maybe a third of the way around the ground rod, on each ground rod, so, yeah, pricey, but worth it, I mean, to do it right. Otherwise, you have to uh, use silver solder, which you're going to be out there with map gas trying to silver solder, you know, this to that uh, ground rod, or you use something like a one-shot uh, CAD weld where it's a really super extremely hot, uh, I guess, um, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to think of right now, uh, reaction, very hot reaction, chemical reaction that you can bond uh, regular a copper cable to the ground rod. So I went this way. Uh, I mean, these things hurt <laughs> when I ordered them, but oh well. All of this did. Copper is just so stupidly priced right now. So there's 100 feet of that. I'll use the uh, braid inside, but I'm going to use some of this and I'm going to uh, hook it onto a piece of uh, aluminum uh, angle iron inside. Just a sh short section, maybe like a, a foot or two. I'm going to use that as a ground butt inside the shack, and then I'll run the braided off of that.
So that's the, uh, besides the grounding rods, that's all the stuff I'm going to be using for my ground system outside. Now when I do run this, the strap here from the ground rods, I'm going to go out, the, the first hit's going to be right where my feed through is going in the shack, and then I'm going to gently arc it around one corner of the house towards the mains, and then the mains box will be grounded to the same ground system. That's the way you should do it, and that's pretty much the way code has you do it. You don't want there to be a differential between your house ground and your uh, shack ground. So you're, you're coming down your antenna feed point, I'll have uh, spark, you know, uh, lightning arresters and uh, static discharge for the coax. It'll be, it'll hit the first uh, ground rod with this strap. One part will go up in the house, and then the strap's going to start running the run around the corner, all the way around over to where the mains is, and then I'll drop uh, either a piece of this copper strap or a big heavy gauge wire down from the, the uh, mains box. I got a mains breaker on the side of my house and the mains feed and I will ground those systems and they'll all be grounded together. So that's it. This is uh, all the grounding items from Georgia Copper. And uh, I know people didn't know about this, this kind of stuff. I hope I showed you something you haven't seen. And uh, when I start digging and pounding 40 foot of ground rod in the ground, <laughs> which should be an enjoyment here. Uh, I'm on a lot of uh, coral rock and the ground, once you go down a couple feet, it's like drilling in the concrete. When I do start putting the system in, I will do a video showing uh, everything in place before I put the dirt back and show you the connections. So, this is just an overview of the. Uh, different pieces for the grounding system. Have a good one. I'm back. I always seem to review my video real quick, see my footage, and uh, I see something that I mentioned and then I never followed up on. So I wanted to follow up on, I had said, uh, the different sizes of uh, grounding used. Now, outside we'll be using the inch and a half from ground rod to ground rod in the ground, okay? and the surface area. And I had mentioned using a smaller diameter in the shack and I wanted to cover why. Basically you want, if something were to come down the coax and, and you want to try to, to prevent it to go into your shack, you want it to go to the path of least resistance, which would be the, the, the uh, ground strap here which has a greater surface area and is in the ground versus going up a smaller surface area or a smaller am or amount if you I mean if you're talking voltage you're still there's there's more here in the ground than there is going into your shack so i mean you wouldn't want to run this all the way up in into your equipment because then the path is kind of when it comes down it goes mm, which way do i want to go you know, and it, if it sees a you know nice big fat piece of copper in the ground, you know, hooked to five ground rods, it's going to say, "I think I want to go that way and and go in." Uh, so when you're running inside, I mean, one inch is a, is a decent amount to uh, to go from each piece of equipment to your ground bus, and then probably another section of this to go uh, feed outside to the first ground rod. Or, or maybe uh, like I'm going to use a, a window feed point, so I'll run this this braided strap here to the window feed point, and then from the window to the ground, I'll use the the copper strap. But the reason for the two different sizes was just for the path of least resistance. You really, you know, God forbid, lightning comes down and puts a whacking on your on your antenna, it's going to see that nice big uh, fat piece of copper in the ground and, and want to go that way. So I just wanted to touch on that real quick. And uh, that's all. Later on.